Good evening, Jules fans, and welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV. Um, second time in a week, unfortunately, now that we are having to talk about a massive player departing the football club. Um, after Cody McDonald last week, who left to join AFC Wimbledon, um, 48 hours ago, it was sadly confirmed that Bradley Dack has left Gillingham to join fellow League One side Blackburn Rovers. Um, the fee reported to be in the region of 750000 initially, um, plus potential for add-ons. Um, but yeah, um, as much as we saw it coming, um, knew it was coming with only 12 months to run on Dackey's contract, um, it's still a sad day. Um, it always is when you lose a player um, who can be as influential as, as Dackey can be, um, especially when he's at his best. Um, so the purpose of this video is um, to have a look back at Bradley Dack's career with the football club. I'm going to share a few of my own personal memories, favourite goals, um, and also just have a look at um, his Gillingham career in numbers. He made his debut back in the 2012-2013 campaign. Um, turned out to not be a bad season to, to get involved in the first team. Um, went on to make 20 appearances, scored two and assisted two that season. Um, went out for a brief loan spell towards the end of the season, but was back in time for the, the title party as the Jules won League Two. And he won uh, the Young Player of the Year award at the end of that season. Um, stepped up into League One the following season. Obviously, Peter Taylor took over in the October from the sacked Martin Allen um, and continued his progression. After making 20 appearances in his debut campaign, he went and made 32 appearances. Um, scored five goals and made six assists. So the progress was clear and there for all to see as the Jules avoided relegation towards the end of the season. I believe he scored a good goal at home to Tranmere, which all but sealed our safety in that league, which was great to see. Um, and then obviously 2014-15 was when he really pushed on and became a regular, uh, made 50 appearances. Um, first half of the season, I think he was sort of in and out of the side or played out of position under, under Peter Taylor. Um, and there were whispers that he that he might leave either permanently or loan. Um, obviously, we spoke to Daki a few weeks ago. We were lucky enough. Um, may actually have been his last interview as a Jules player. Um, he said there was never any intention to leave permanently himself. It was just sort of social media and, and media rumblings at the time. He said he might have gone on loan to get games, but in terms of wanting to leave the football club, he, he, he didn't want to. He made that very clear. Um, but when Justin Edinburgh came in and replaced Peter Taylor halfway through, he started to really revel in that, that centre attacking midfield role. And he ended the campaign with 10 goals and nine assists. So again, he just kept making progress and, and progress and was getting better and better. And then obviously we know 2015, 2016, he had an absolutely brilliant season. It all started off um, with that screamer in the opening day thumping of Sheffield United. Um, and he just went from strength to strength from there, didn't he? Um, he ended the season um, playing 44 times, scored 15, and he created 10 more with his assists. Um, so that was 25 goals he was he was directly involved in, in 44 appearances. Um, unfortunately, got injured at a crucial time, just as the, the wheel started to come off somewhat on our promotion bid. Um, but from a personal point of view, he had a, he had a magical season, um, culminating in being play, uh, named League One Footballer of the Year. Um, after that, I think 99% of us Jill stands thought he's definitely off. We turned down bids in the January. It was rumoured that Bristol City had come in with a bids of up to two, two and a half million. But fair play to the chairman at the time and the manager, Justin Edinburgh. They, they stuck to their guns and we kept him um, because we was in with a real shot of not only getting promoted or staying in the playoffs, but actually winning the league. Um, we all know what happened. Unfortunately, it, it fell apart and crumbled and we missed out on the playoffs altogether in the end. Um, but he didn't get his move. And then something was slightly amiss last season. Um, there was talks of him being overweight and not fully fit. And he kept getting niggly injuries. And it, it just looked to plenty. Myself, I said a few times, it looked like he didn't want to be at the football club. Um, and we spoke to him, like I said. And he, he was he was brave enough and honest enough to admit live on air that um, perhaps subconsciously it did affect him. And that he did think maybe he would be moving on at the end of last season. Um, uh, 2015, 16, sorry, because I think we all remember the lap of honour that he did after that, that Millwall defeat. Um, he was out on the pitch long after everyone else had gone in and took his time to talk to and have photos with everyone that, that had stayed behind, um, myself included. And 
the boys that I go with and my stepson, we was all there waiting for him. It was, it felt like a farewell. Um, but there were still flashes of Daki at his absolute best last season. Um, and by no means was it a disaster. He played 39 times and scored six and was um, directly involved in another seven. Um, but I think he just raised the bar so high the season before that it felt like he'd, he'd been disappointing. Um, but all in all, um, over 180 games, 38 goals and 34 assists. And this is for a lad that's only 23, remember? When he broke into the team, he was still a kid, a real young kid. Um, but it was apparent quite quickly that he had all the tools to go to go further than us, to outgrow Gillingham. And that's no disrespect to us as a football club. Um, and he's got that move now. And I, for one, wish him all the best. Um, in terms of the fee, it's not a bad one, considering he's into the final 12 months of his contract. Um, but let's just have a look at a few a few more numbers and, and break it down a bit further. Overall, he played 185 times for the Jills. Pulled on that shirt. Um, and he was directly involved in 74 goals in that time, which is 0.4 goals per game. So just under a goal every other game he was involved in. That's 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 a super record, I think, at this level. That's just my opinion. Others might, might disagree. Um, 38 goals in that time, which was 0.21 per game. So he was... On average, he's scoring one every five. So if you play 50 games in a season, you're hitting double figures all the time. Um, if you play 60, if you're lucky enough to have a cup run, then you're hitting a dozen goals every season on average, which ain't too bad. Um, and uh, he assisted 34 more goals. So that's 0.18 per game. So you put all that together, that's 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 a, a very, very decent record in League One, League Two. And you can see why he's been coveted by so many bigger clubs than Gillingham. Um Obviously, the massive purple patch came from 2014 through to 2016, like I've already touched on, especially after Justin Edinburgh came and he started to thrive. And he's mentioned in our interview and plenty of others previously that he revelled in that role under Justin and, and Justin's the best manager he's played under. Um, but yeah, from 2014 to 2016, them two seasons, 94 appearances and he scored 25 goals. Um, and claimed 19 assists. So he was involved in 44 goals, which was up on his 0.4 um, per game in total to 0.47. So you can see the you can see the, the pivotal role that Justin played in him and his development. In terms of goals scored, it was 25 in 94. So that was 0.27 per game, up from 0.21. So again, more improvement. And assists, 19 in 94. So that's up from 0.18 as a whole in his time at Gillingham to 0.2. Again, so that's an assist. It's one assist in five. So an assist in goal in five. You're looking at a very, very good return for a midfielder. Um, in terms of Daki, the person, the player, sorry, hardworking, tenacious, passionate, technically very good. We could see that very early on in his Jill's career. Good with both feet, quick enough. Um Probably might have to learn to, to curb the, the temper when things aren't going his way because he's, he's picked up a few niggly and silly yellow cards and red cards in his time with us. Um, last season, two red cards for daft things. Um, a lunge at Millwall and then obviously descent at MK Dons later on in the season. That'll be something. But he's still learning the game, like I say, at 23. And, but then... To look at it the other way, you have players that have that edge. Deli Alley at Tottenham, uh, Wayne Rooney had it at United. I think if you take that edge away from players, it, it sort of almost takes something away from their game. So, um, still learning, but I think he'd do very well at Blackburn. I think it's a great club for him to go to at this stage of his career. Um, so, step up in terms of us, in terms of support and crowd and stadium and facilities. We can't pretend otherwise. Um, and I think he'll do very well if he gets games. And I think they're probably going to be one of the big favourites for promotion this season. So, all in all, all the best, Ducky. Thanks for all the memories. I'm um, just going to have a look back now and go through my favourite five goals. Right, before anyone asks and comments why I've not included the Sheffield United one um, from the first day thumping 2015-16, I wasn't there. I had to work, unfortunately, so I wasn't there to see it live. So I picked goals that I've seen him score live, not just ones that I've seen on highlights. Um, my first one, Tranmere at home, 2013-14, um, showed superb technique after coming off the bench. Um, ball got played into the box, I think, from a corner, and we needed to win to be guaranteed safety. Um, and as the ball's dropped, he's hit it on the outside of his right foot on the volley. Perfect technique, knee over the ball, head over the ball, 
and it's flown in the corner despite the best efforts to save it from both their keeper and their defender on the line. Um, I think after that, Cody scored after their keeper had come up and, and the celebration said it all. Um, we are staying up, rang around the ground. But yeah, um, for me, Daki had arrived then. That was a that was a big, big goal in a big, big game. And, and yeah, it was a super strike on its own. But in terms of the context and what it meant as well, that made it even better. Um, after that, number two is Bradford at home. January 2016, we were still massively in the promotion hunt, massively in the, the hunt for the title in League One. Um, and it was freezing cold, if I remember rightly. And I think Rory Donnelly scored a good goal in this game as well. But Daki got the ball back to goal, I believe. We'll have a look in a minute because I'll show you them, um, see if I'm correct. Um, dropped the shoulder and, uh, and sort of ran into space edge of the box and left footed bent it into the far bottom corner without really breaking stride. Um, Keeper didn't really have a chance in it. I thought it was a really, really good strike against a good side and we ended up going on to win pretty comfortably. Um, third, might be somewhat surprising because plenty say he had an average season last season, but I'm going to go for his solo effort in the home draw against AFC Wimbledon, where he picked the ball up on his own and drove into the heart of the AFC Wimbledon defence. Um, I think they started backing off a little bit. Again, a little drop of the shoulder, shifted it, shifted his weight onto his left foot um, in front of, I think it was a pretty empty town end, if I can't remember rightly. Sorry, Brian Moore stand for the younger fans. And um, Ben placed a really good finish into the far bottom corner. Um, sort of put us on our way and we thought we might go on and win the game. This was when AD had just taken over and we were desperate for that first win. Unfortunately, we ended up drawing a certain Andrew Bartram scored an equaliser. But it was one of, probably not enough, but one of a few glimpses of the real Bradley Dack last season in what was a testing campaign for, for us as fans and the football club as a whole and Dackie himself. Um, but it was still a really good goal. Um, number four, Sheffield United at home last season in front of the Sky cameras. I don't think he was even fully fit. Um, but we won a free kick again in front of the Brian Moore stand. Um, about 25 yards out, probably just left of centre from where we were stood in the rain amend. Um, and he's bent an absolutely delicious free kick up and down over the wall and into the corner to put us 1-0 up. Um, Daki at his best again, technically superb, a great strike um, in a big game. And fifth on my list, going back to 2014-15, right at the beginning of the season, another one, Brian Moore stand. Um, they've been treated down that end, it seems, against Crew Alexander. Ball came to him, edge of the box. He's on the D right-hand side, and he's managed to shift it from his right foot to his left foot and sort of dig out a curler into the and lofted it sort of up and over the keeper and into the into the far corner to put us one nil up. Um, I believe Cody scored after that as well. Um, see what I mean? A lot of goals and a lot of assists that we're going to have to replace this summer. Um, but yeah, really good strike, um, and it was almost the start of something big because he scored a couple of goals in the first half of the season, and then like we've already said, when Justin come on bald in the February he really kicked on and ended up getting into double figures but it was a really good goal and it was a, an important first and put us on the way to a good three points so that's my top five goals I'm sure you've all got your own um, there's plenty of other memories aside from, from just the goals and um, you all have your own favourites so I'm sure we'll, we'll chat about them on Twitter and Facebook that'd be great um, but for now here is my Bradley Dack top five enjoy So that's it then, we move on, we have to. Um, 
we've we've survived and moved on from from good players in the past. Tony Cascarino going back a long time. There's probably more before that for the the more senior members of of the fan base. Um, Robert Taylor, Carla Saba, uh, Marlon King, Simeon Jackson, Cody last week. Will we survive them? No one's bigger than this football club. Gillingham Football Club will be around a long time after for all of them players that we've mentioned and it'll keep going and we'll keep supporting them and keep loving them. Um, yes, it is It is a sad day when you lose good players. Um, but we wish Daki all the best. Well, I certainly do. I hope, he, I hope he's really good at Blackburn and he, he goes on to, to get in the championship because I think that's where he deserves to be. Um, obviously, we hope he has two stinkers this coming season at Ewood Park and at Priestfield. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Please keep liking, please keep subscribing. Um, drop us a comment in the box below um, if you're on Facebook or reply if this is on Twitter. Um, show us your best, your best Bradley Dak moments, your favourite Bradley Dak goals. And until next time, up the jills.